right or left shoulder, depending upon which, which side of the floor you're on, very quickly at your partner, your, your forward partner. So we get the ball into the low, for, low forward and we get what's called a dive. And we just simply dive our trail forward into the lane for hopefully a short shot or a layup. In our third clip, once again, we're going to go wing to lead forward in the low post. The help defense really drops in on our low forward, so our trail forward dives and gets the drop for the finish. Continuing with our sequence of reads and scoring opportunities, we've gone from wing to post. We've gone from wing to post to a diving forward. Now we'd like to just show simply a spot off opportunity for our trail forward. We go wing to post. Help side defense, including the defense on our trail forward, dives in the lane, does a great job short sliding and helping, maybe even straight double teaming and maybe trying to dig the ball out of the post. We're just going to spot up our trail forward. In our fourth clip, our point guard does a very nice job with the sideline ladder pass. We enter the ball nicely to the low forward, who kicks it to our trail forward for the spot up shot. Another quality scoring opportunity is using your safety position or your point guard position as an offensive scoring option. If for some reason we cannot swing the ball through the trail forward or throw a quality skip across court. Our wings will settle on their safety position, which is a point guard position. In a very quick manner, we'll come over and set a nice ball screen. Our point guard will attack off the shoulder of that ball screen and many times get into the 15, 16 foot area for a shot opportunity or a drop to our lead forward, okay, or even finish all the way to the basket. In our fifth clip, ball reversal will come through our safety spot, which is our point guard. In all safety reversals, the trail forward sets a ball pick. In this case, we get a nice shot in the lane. In our sixth clip, we get a very strong push from our point guard. The point guard will drop it to our trail forward, who then swings it to our wing to evaluate the low post. Upon trail forward reversal, we're able to hit our wing cutter on the lob. The fourth scoring opportunity on our secondary break involving our trail forward includes a penetration and kick to our weak side wing. Once again, our wing's first read is inside, chooses not to swing the ball through our point guard safety. Typical reversal through our trail forward. Our trail forward then sees the opportunity. Maybe his man is pressing him a little bit. Okay, maybe his man is way, way off him. But in either case, the trail forward sees the opportunity to put the ball on the floor and take it into a gap. Kicking the ball to our wing shooter. In our seventh clip, the point guard speed dribbles the wing, drops it off for our trail forward. Our trail forward penetrates the gap. Defense collapse, and he kicks it for our weak side spot up shooter. In the eighth clip, we get a strong push from our lead guard. We swing the ball through our trail forward, who is very patient in evaluating the wing cutter action and roll back. And because of the sagging defense, we get a weak side jump shot. As we move through our progression here in our, in, our, in our scoring cuts, it's important to note that as the players get more comfortable and confident, um, the reads become really, really important and the quick ball movement becomes really, really important. They no longer have to hold the ball. Their reads are one count, uh, maybe a count and a half, maximally a two count to look into the, to the lead forward. But the ball really gets moving and the, and the defense really gets on their heels because if you want to be a defense that stops people from the inside out, which I'm sure most defenses that are any good, that's the plan, 
you start to cover that low post area and the quick ball movement around the outside really creates nice opportunities. Now we've shown um, the trail forward opportunities, we've shown the safety, uh, taking a penetration off of uh, a good ball screen. Um, we've shown a weak side uh, uh, kick to our, to our spot up wing player for a, for a perimeter shot. But the, really, if you, the quicker you swing the ball, the more opportunity for a really strong drive on the weak side. We're evaluating that post for a one count and we got real quick ball movement here, the outside shoulder. Very quick ball movement here to this wing. And when we square and catch here with our wing, we're gonna get it on the floor instantly and try to get past our defender if our defender's over closing, if our defender's not closing far, far enough to us, giving us a lot of gap. Uh, the kids really start to gain confidence in being very aggressive through these reads and they're not thinking anymore, they're just playing. In our ninth clip, we get nice quick ball reversal through our trail forward. Our weak side wing takes advantage of a driving opportunity and draws the foul. As the defenses start to become a little bit more accustomed to our movement and where we want the ball to go uh, during the course of our secondary break, you start to see them take some chances. And our weak side wing back cut is, is something that we really, really talk a lot about in practice and we practice it a lot. We get coaches out in passing lanes and force our kids to make the read in practice, in our drill work, and, and really work at our back cuts. We get the ball swung through our trail forward. And now the defense, as I said, is becoming custom. So now we're getting defenses in, in, in passing lanes. And that's when you really want to get on that outside foot and back cut your man to the basket get an easy scoring opportunity. In our 10th clip, we're dealing with overplaying defense. We swing the ball through our trail forward, we have denial wing pressure, and a nice back cut by our wing player for the layup. In the 11th clip, our kids once again do a wonderful job of ball reversal and recognizing the overplaying defense and delivering on the back cut and finish. Our seventh clip involves our wing cutter getting through to a baseline jump shot. There are times when the defense does not respond quickly on ball reversal and we're able to get a ball reversal through our safety, through our trail forward, maybe through a skip. And when we, when we step out with our trail forward to set this pick on the back side to get our wing through, we are at times able to get this defensive man picked off right here with our lead forward and we're able to get all the way through and get squared up on the baseline or the wing for that wing jump shot. In the 12th clip, we see our wing cutter make the decision to cut low off our lead forward screen. He receives the ball on the baseline for a short jump shot. The next sequence again involves our wing cutter. We get the ball reversed in any one of the three ways that have been discussed. And we get our wing cutter through, ball gets reversed. We get our wing cutter through off the low screen. And instead of carrying through for a perimeter catch, we stop and isolate that player for a post opportunity. In our 13th clip, we get a strong push and dribble reversal out of our point guard. Our wing cutter decides to go low off the screen, stops in the post, make a nice post pass, and we finish inside. The 14th clip is our first look at a wing skip. There's excellent help side defense here by our opponent. We make them pay with a wing to wing skip and jump shot. At this point in our progression, we do have the defense on the run just a little bit. Uh, we've had some success with our wing coming off our, our low forward screen. Uh, we've been able to get a, a good jump shot opportunity. We've stopped in the post, and we've really got the defense uh, on the run as far as changing sides of the floor quickly. They're worried about our weak side action. Right about now, it's important that we get focused on our rollback because we have defenses reacting to quick ball reversal. 
Uh, we do have a pretty simple pattern of what we're trying to do. So they're changing sides of the floor against us and they're cutting off some of this action. They're able to get on the other side of these screens. And as we get through, keeping in mind our trail forward and wing, I have to continue to do a good job of not standing in these areas for ball reverse, a lot of V cuts and moving to get it reversed. As we get through off these screens, the defenses start to beat us to the spot. So as we make our cut and we get through, this becomes tougher and tougher to get those post up and jump shot opportunities. Now, the thing, if the screen is done really well by our low forward, is the defender of the low forward has got to get in there and chip that cutter. And when they chip that cutter, that's when we really start having some fun with the rollback opportunity. Our kids really enjoy that. Our, our, I find our guards like that pass more than any other pass that we throw. The guards like to throw the two-hand, weak side, overhead pass, and hit our forwards on the rollback. It's kind of a fun play to make. So we get the ball swung around. Here comes our wing cutter. And they do a nice job of showing and taking care of ball side action. And we throw that weak side roll back opportunity to our lead forward. The 15th clip is our first look at the forward rollback option of our break. We get a wing skip, a low cut, and a forward rollback that passes on time. And we get a forward rollback finish on the inside. Our 16th clip involves more lead forward rollback action. In this case, our wing cutter decides to go over the top, and the rollback pass is delivered on time, and we go very strong to the basket. Clip 17 illustrates rollback action once again. In this case, our wing decides to cut low on the baseline. We deliver the ball with a slight delay to our forward, who finishes with the left hand. More rollback action on clip number 18. Our wing cutter decides to go over the top of the screen. There's great show and help defense by our opponent, which really opens up the rollback and a strong finish. Clip number 19 showcases a higher than normal wing cut. Our wing player chooses to go high off the screen, as high as the free throw line, which opens up a rollback short corner jump shot for our forward. Clip 20 is our last illustration of the rollback series. We get a wing cut over the top and a beautiful overhead pass to our rollback forward for a strong finish. The last option in the flow of our regular break sequence is our back screen lob option, which can also turn into a, what would be the equivalent of a ball screen. Again, we have our first read in the post. We get the ball swung through our safety, trail forward or skip. Get the ball swung. Step our lead forward out to the screen. Bring our wing cutter through. Have our rollback option. Wing to rollback. Not there. That's a one step rollback generally, nothing more. We're getting right into our high post screen for our trail forward. And what at times will happen is we'll take our our trail forward will set it up and we can get a weak side lob. Or generally what will happen more often than that though is that the defense just doesn't come out and respect the forward at the three point line. And so they play very flat right around the, right around the free throw line. So what we can get is kind of a, a delayed action where we actually ask our trail forward to delay his cut to the weak side. And in so doing, the wing will make a read and give the ball to the trail forward as the lead forward is back screening and it turns into a back screen ball screen because our wing player gives it to our trail forward on the delay just before they break, gives it to him on the delay and now instead of this becoming a back screen lob opportunity becomes a quick reverse back to our trail forward just as they're starting their cut and our back screener becomes a ball screener and then we use that brush 
screen to get a chance to get the penetration, get in the lane, maybe get a good uh, shot opportunity in the paint. Clip 21 illustrates the last option of our secondary break, the back screen option. In this case, our trail forward hesitates just a bit on his cut. So we end up with what would be the equivalent of a ball screen and a finish out of our trail forward. One thing we like to do with our secondary break action as well is just to have a little variation in there now and then. Just add something in there that looks completely different to what we normally do as a flow of our secondary break. Uh, the split variation I'd like to show you is, is a little difficult to show on the board with the action. It gets to be a lot of lines up there, uh, but I'll do the best I can to show the action with one full ball reversal on our split. The split is something that will call, um, th this will be a call, unlike any other part of our secondary break sequence. Now, we, if we say nothing, we run our normal secondary break with our 10 options that we've been through. But if we call split, if we have a little bit of a delay and if the break isn't quite have the pace that we're looking for, we'll call split and our guys, we work on it in practice so they'll get right into it very quickly. Looks like this, we've got the ball up our right sideline, could be our left as we've discussed. Again, we're looking inside first and we're swinging the ball through one of our three reversal options. When we do that, and we get it swung, we're now gonna send our wing player through off of two screens instead of one. So our original ball side starts his cut. We'd like that cut to get beneath the low forward. So the low forward can take a step up, turn around, and line up the first screen. Meanwhile, as that's happening, our trail forward is pinning in behind to set up the stagger. We now have a lead forward and a trail forward staggered screen set up. We're taking our original ball side wing on a curl. If they cheat, we could all, always back cut it. A curl over the top. If we get it in here, certainly a catch and a shot opportunity could.